Well, Zach Brown, uh, thank you uh, for having me at a, at a job where I can actually film someone on camera. It's good to see you, change. even if it's from a couple of meters from away. a couple of meters away, but it's, it is great. And uh, in great circumstances as well, because uh, although you let uh, Carlos Sainz go, he's going to Ferrari at the, at the end of this season, you bring in Daniel Ricciardo, who is uh, well, he's, a, he's one of the A-list uh, drivers in F1. I wonder, is this a measure of how the team has improved over the last couple of years that you were able to attract him? Yeah, I think getting a, a, a Grand Prix winner like Daniel definitely is a sign that um, we're going the right direction. Uh, he believes uh, in that. You know, we went after him a couple years ago before he made the decision uh, not to join us. And I've talked to him about it since, you know, what was, and he went, uh, well, you, you were coming off a pretty poor season, which is uh, uh, putting it politely, um, but also, there was a lot of this is what we're going to do to rebuild the team. I hadn't brought in yet Andreas Seidel or James Key or restructured the leadership team. So there was a lot of promises. And coming off such a bad season, I could see how he would go, mm, let's see how this plays out. And he's liked how it's played out. I've liked how it's played out. And so I think now he's seen with the changes that we've made, the leadership Andreas is brought and uh, the, the backing we have from our shareholders going to the Mercedes engine that um, we're a team uh, team on the move and I think he's going to help get us to the next level. Yeah. With him and Lando Norris, uh, it strikes me you're lacking a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're both deadly serious in a race car, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, Lando's excited. Um, you know, they're great personalities. I think they're fan favorites. So as a combination, I think we have the most exciting driver lineup kind of on and off the track uh, for 21. I think we've got a great lineup for 20, 2020. You know, so we're all very laser focused on getting back to racing this year and uh, we'll get excited about 21 when we're done with 20. Yeah, well, it's exciting. It's an exciting pairing. Now, Carlos goes uh, and uh, spoken um, about his appreciation of what this team has done for him. And it has done an awful lot for him as well. He owes McLaren quite a debt. We owe him quite a bit, you know. I think uh, we did this uh, together. So uh, obviously, uh, Carlos and Lando played a, a big role in our improvement as a as a team. So you know, we'll miss Carlos. Uh, he's he's family. His his family's family. It's a he's a great human being. He's a great race car driver. Everyone around him uh, are great people. And I think you know, it's really nice. The video he did, he did on his own. That was something we weren't uh, aware of. This kind of I'm sad to go. And I think he genuinely is and I get the uh, allure of why he's he's made the decision that he has and you know it's created a, a great opportunity for for us but I think it uh, it shows that you can um, part ways mm -hmm. and maintain great relationships if if you have a great relationship and when you look at historically how a lot of these drivers move around that's kind of comes at the end of a fallout with their with their team which is unfortunate but uh, I think McLaren we've uh, done a good job of creating a, a really a good environment for our drivers and our team members and so people uh, want to race for McLaren and um, when they leave they're a bit sad about that um, and uh, but I think he's gonna have great success there. Yeah. Daniel Ricciardo has left Renault to come here. He prefers to be here. It's, you know, that, that seems clear. Do you think Fernando Alonso could be tempted by that Renault seat into coming back? You know him as well as anyone. Yeah, I spoke with him the other day and yeah. it was kind of poking around. And uh, I think he's un undecided. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if I was uh, running uh, Renault, that's who I'd put in the car. Um, you know, big name, fast as anyone, won two championships with him. So he's got history. So f from a Renault perspective, I think he's a bit of a, a no-brainer to put in. But whether Fernando wants to get back to... 22 races um, with a car that doesn't look like it's capable of winning yet, right? I think given Fernando's stature, what would get him to jump at a seat is if he thinks he could be on the top of the podium. Mm -hmm. So given that they're on a similar um, kind of journey back to the front, and I think they'll get there. They're a great team, great resources, great, great company who's been there, done that before. I don't know if Fernando has the appetite to kind of be on a three-year journey versus getting in a car that he can win in in 21. Yeah. Well, watch that space. What about Sebastian Vettel? One or two linked him uh, mm. with coming here. Uh, on balance, the wrong time for that. Maybe the wrong time in his life uh, uh, to, be, to, be, to be moving over to here, a different team. Well, we, we were already far down the path with, with Daniel. Um, you know, we knew it was going to be either kind of Daniel or Carlos in our car. And we knew that in the winter. 
So by the time this all kind of popped up with Seb, our ship had, had sailed. And, um, you know, I like where Daniel's at in his career. Um, he's got something to, to prove. He's hungry. And so, um, you know, Seb's an awesome champion. I don't know what will happen with him, kind of like Fernando. Does, if he wants to get into a car, he can go win the championship in right away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appear those seats are available. So does he want to hit the reset button and get on a three-year journey somewhere? Or is he, uh, he done? I think he clearly still wants the race. So it'll be an unfortunate if you have a four-time world champion who wants the race but can't find that seat that, yeah. uh, that he deserves. Yeah, we all want to race, uh, uh, of course. And we're looking at racing in Austria, a couple of races there, maybe Silverstone. It looks like that might happen now, a couple of races there. What's in place in terms of guaranteeing that Grand Prix weekends will carry on, even perhaps despite the odd case of coronavirus turning up? What happened in Australia is entirely understandable. Should something similar happen, are there now agreements, protocols in place to enable the show to go on. Yeah, so one word that you said that I wouldn't use is guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, who knows uh, what you can do. I think all you can do is be really prepared, think through all the scenarios. You know, we were very prepared coming into Australia. We knew exactly what we were gonna do in different circumstances and, and we just acted against that. Um, I think as an industry, collectively, we weren't that prepared and I think that showed by um, kind of crisis meetings Thursday night, a split between the teams, fans queuing up on Friday, some teams at the track, some drivers on the plane. That wasn't very well choreographed. I, you know, I wasn't one of Formula One's finer moments. Mm -hmm. Now I think we've learned from, from that and the discussions are um, deep and thorough. Um, within the industry, then you got to work with each individual government, you got to work with each promoter. So I think we're much more prepared and a uh, ton of caution on how we're going to go racing and then kind of be prepared for some incidents and try and isolate to where if someone has COVID, it doesn't shut the whole thing down because the chances of someone having it mm. probably fairly high. Um, Fortunately, it's a pretty healthy, you know, youthful environment, which, you know, by watching the news, that kind of tells you that's a little bit of the safer crowd. I don't think there's any guarantees around that. But, um, you know, I talked to Ross Braun at uh, length last night, and, uh, you know, his comment, which I agree with, is if we, we handle this right, one of the safest places to be might be at a Grand Prix. Yeah. So, you know, the testing will be immense, the protocols will be immense, the social distancing, the safety. Um, but you still will be probably throwing a curveball if we're going to go do 15 races around the world. We're going to have something that happens, and so it's all about being prepared. Okay, well, that's fingers crossed it, is, it all goes smoothly. Um, cost cap vote was due to be today. Uh, maybe you can tell me that it's been delayed a little bit, but it's, it's a big topic. Uh, you've been championing a lower-end cost cap. Ferrari are obviously in the other corner. Uh, it's been a good scrap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it a scrap you've won, do you think? Um, well, you know, I think the sport has, has won, and that's really what I've been uh, fighting for is, is not just McLaren, you know, what I think is right for the sport. I, I think what's right for the sport is right for McLaren and, and will ultimately benefit everyone. So I do think we're going to get the cost cap down to uh, a level that uh, the strong majority of the teams are, are happy with and, and where it needs to be. Uh, it looks like the vote will be next week. There's a little bit of fine tuning, not on the headline number, but in some of the details. So um, I, I think uh, I'd like to declare victory on behalf of uh, uh, the entire Formula One world, which ultimately means the fans, because what that budget cap is going to do, it's going to make the sport financially sustainable for all these racing teams. It's going to make competition closer. And the winner will be ultimately the fans who are going to see better, closer racing, hopefully more teams winning, and then we all win. And Ferrari aren't going to veto it, are they? Uh, who knows what Ferrari will do, but I, I don't think, uh, I think it will go through. Okay. I well, listen, Zach Brown, just finally, let's leave us on a note of optimism. Uh, we don't really know how many races there will be this year. It's very fluid, but will we get something, will we get a, well, will we be able to enjoy a season of racing, do you think? That's, I, I think so. You know, I think the, the plan 16 to 18, I'm a little more pessimistic than that, maybe 15, but you know, it wasn't long ago, 16 races made up the championship. So I think to do 
14 to 18 races, you know, let's pick that window in a half a season. It's going to be a lot of, lot of racing. I think it's going to be super exciting. The, the drivers are, are looking forward to it. So I think we're going to get in a quality racing season. Thank you for having us, Ryan. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Great stuff.